Hey everyone, in this episode we are going to address a very important question. One that's probably the most commonly asked question among skeptics and um, people who just aren't sure or who are just uneducated or are new to this area of study. Are the words in my Bible today accurate to the original? In other words, is the Bible that I have in my hand the same as what they had back then? Or have we just undergone the longest game of telephone and the words that we have are just so different, it's, it's not even the same? So how can I know that my Bible is the same? How can I know that that Gospel of John there on the left from the 400s in Latin or whatever is the same basic words in different language, but the same basic words as what you have there in the Middle Ages copy of John and, and the copy of John that I have today? How can I know that they're the same? Is it still the word of God as it was written? These are some very serious questions and I kind of want to put a little light on some of them. So first let's start with John himself, okay? This is the oldest known fragment. We talked earlier about how a manuscript can be anything. And in this case right here, this little piece of index size piece of papyrus um, is a copy of John. This is Papyrus P52. It is the oldest known copy that we have of the Gospel of John and the oldest known copy that we have of the New Testament today, dating from around 120, 125 AD. That's amazing, okay? And it's called Papyrus P52. Um, stop and think for a minute about how old this thing is. This thing is over 1900 years old, almost, basically. And yet it is in legible condition. Even though it's a fragment, there's not much there. This copy of John is, at least as far as we know, not only the oldest of any one that we found, at least not contested. There are some other um, fragments and copies that are out there. The dating on them is contested and argued by scholars. But even the liberal scholars acknowledge that this papyrus comes from around 120-ish AD. What's written on it? Basically, John's conversation um, that he records between Jesus and Pontius Pilate before Jesus is crucified. The conversation on one side you have is, is verse 31 through 33, and then on the back side is the conversation, verse 37 and 38, those verses there. They're the same words. For the words that are there, for the words we can make out, it's the same. Same words we have that have been translated into English, from Greek into English, but still the same words. Nothing has changed in 1900 years about it. When you consider that John is writing his gospel, the last of the four, and John is writing in around 90 AD, according to all the historical and church records that we have on this matter, this copy of John's gospel is 30 years removed away from the original. All the originals are gone. They're papyrus, they wear out, they get used. So copies were made. The fact that this is only 30 years removed from the original is utterly amazing. And you'll understand that a little bit better here in a few minutes. Think about this for a second, you guys. I really want you to stress this, right? If you go to Washington, D.C. right now and you head to the National Archive and you look at the copy of the Declaration of Independence, all right, it's worn out. It's 240 year old basically uh, vellum which is basically animal hide and it's worn out you can't read a single sentence on the original declaration of independence today um, because the words have either faded or are fading or they're just completely gone they're missing they're not there anymore so we just have to look at the copies to read what so we know what the original said and that's from a group of people who've actually done a fairly decent job at trying to preserve a copy of it, except for, you know, when Nick Cage went in there and he, he stole the, you know, the declaration. It got a little roughed up and beat up then. But for the most part, the declaration has been pretty well preserved these last two and a half centuries, for the most part. And yet it's faded. You can't even walk into that room without the lights being incredibly dim. So let's look at another example of a few more different manuscripts. Um, this one is really cool. There's about uh, half a dozen of, the, of P72, Papyrus 72. And on here is one of the oldest copies we have of Jude and 1st and 2nd Peter. 
comes from around 250 AD. That date's important. Now the page that I'm highlighting of um, Papyrus P72 is actually the one where 1 Peter ends and where 2 Peter starts. This is uh, pretty interesting, okay? Um, if you remember the movie The Da Vinci Code a few uh, years ago, way back in 2006, the media just fell in love with Dan Brown and his book and his movie and Tom Hanks starred in it. But the basic claim of the book, the basic premise of the movie, is that Constantine and all the other Christians, they secretly plotted back at Nicaea, right? They got together and that's where they invented the deity of Christ. No Christian believed that Jesus was God until 325 at Nicaea, which we proved in the last video that is not the case. That's not what they discussed at Nicaea, nor was the deity of Christ invented there. But here's one great example of what I'm talking about, right? Second Peter 1.1, 1, 1, uh, Peter tells us that Jesus, he calls him both God and Savior. Jesus is both God and Savior in 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. That's an amazing verse. It's highlighted for you there in Greek, but in English, you can go look it up for yourself. But why that's amazing is because think about it. it it's, it's pretty cool. Um, Dan Brown made millions of dollars by saying Constantine invented the deity of Christ in 325 AD. 75 years before that, Papyrus 72 was being written. Like, are, are you getting this, right? In 250, um, in this copy, Peter is calling Jesus God. So no, it was not invented at Nicaea, all right? This papyrus was written 75 years before Nicaea. This papyrus was written about 20 years before Constantine himself was born. So you might want to get a refund on your Da Vinci Code book or maybe sell it because you got lied to, okay? It's uh, fake news, <laughs> as it were. Oh. Um, this is another amazing papyrus, kind of a game changer. Papyrus 75 in the nerdy scholar world of, of Bible manuscripts, Papyrus 75 was huge, big game changer, because they found over um, about 100 pages of manuscripts, of Greek manuscripts, dating from between 175 to 220 AD. We'll split the difference for now. Just say about 200 AD. And half of the papyruses are Luke's gospel, and about the other half, more or less, are John's gospel. And on those 100 plus pages, there were actually a few more, but unfortunately they got lost because these things are so fragile. Um, but we're down to about 100 of them now. Anyways, you can see here on the screen, you can see where Luke's gospel ends, and you can see where John's gospel begins. And again, my point is that here's a manuscript with most of Luke and most of John, and when you translate the Greek into English, or any other language for that matter, it's the same. The words are more or less the same, meaning, guys. Nothing, nothing has changed in the wording and the phrasing. Okay. Now, the granddaddies of them all, kind of the two pillars of modern-day Bible scholarship. The Codex Sinaiticus, written between 330 to 360 AD, it's about 400 pages long. Don't let the name Codex Sinaiticus like, mess with you or try to impress. Codex is just a fancy word for an old-fashioned book, a type of old book. And Sinaiticus, because they found it at Mount Sinai, right? The Roman Catholics built a church next to the place where Constantine's mom, Helena, said, this is where Mount Sinai was, where Moses did his stuff, and the traditions. The, they, they built a, a church, a monastery there, call it whatever you want, and they found this old copy of the Bible. And it's about 400 pages long. Half of the Bible, uh, the Old Testament, is, is there, about half the Old Testament, the Septuagint to be specifically, the Greek Old Testament, and most of the New Testament most of the letters of the New Testament. And it's a uh, twin, if you will, it's, it's pillar in the Bible translation community, comes from around the same time. It's the Codex Vaticanus. Again, just fancy name because they found this old book at the Vatican, right? It dates from about 350 AD. This actually has almost twice the number of pages, about 759 pages. It has most of the Old Testament and New Testament written in Greek. Though there are some important passages missing, and there are whole books missing, like Revelation, Philemon, all right? Um, 
Think about this for a second, though. Remember, in our last video, we talked about the council meetings happening in, in the late 390s. Here we have two Bibles being written as books with most of the New Testament in them, or at least what's left of them for, you know, 1700 years later. Before the official had even occurred, people were already publishing Bibles with the New Testament in them. And the words are the same as your Bible today, guys. Now, if you say, well, what about those missing books and things are falling apart? I own several Bibles. The oldest Bible I have is about 20, just 20 years old. I use it daily and the thing is falling apart. It is literally held together by duct tape, okay? If my 20 year old Bible is falling apart and held together with duct tape, the fact that these Bibles are in such great condition, um, all things considered for 1700 years old, that's pretty awesome. So when we boil this all down, right, when we begin to kind of put the math to things, stop and consider this, you guys. Um, as this was laid out so well in Josh McDowell's book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, and then his son wrote a, a sequel to that with him. But here's the gist. In 2017, we, we knew for sure that we had over 27,000 copies of the New Testament. Um, and about 5,800 of them were in Greek. Greek being the original language, so you're not dealing with any translation issue into another language like Latin or Slavic or, or um, Coptic or something. As of 2019, that count was up to 5,900 Greek copies of the New Old Testament, New Testament, sorry. And in 2022, it's just about over 6,000. But for the sake of our conversation, let's just stick with his 5,800 Greek copies and 27,000 copies total overall. Let's put that into perspective. What's the Bible far and away is first place? Second place is Homer's Iliad, okay? The Trojan War, Helen, Paris, Achilles, and all, all of the stories of that. They have just 2,000 manuscripts compared to the Bible's New Testament's 27,000. That's second place. And the earliest copy we have, if Homer's writing sometime in between like, you know, 9 to 800 BC, the earliest copy we have is almost 500 years later, written sometime between 4 to 300 um, BC. That's insane, right? To have the oldest copy we have of something, or, or maybe the newest copy would be, a, be the better way to say it, is 500 years after it was written. And yet you call, you want to be critical of the Bible, which has, we, I just showed you a copy of John just decades after the original was written. Um, so compared to the Bible, it's not even close. And Homer is the exception to the rule, you guys. Most of them are like Plato, okay? You know, when I was in school, Homer had about six or 700 copies in Plato's writings, famous Greek philosopher, I think there were seven manuscripts of Plato when I was at university about 15 years ago. Today, um, we have about 200 manuscripts of Plato. And again, the time gap, you guys, compared to when Plato was writing to the time that we have, the earliest copy we have of Plato is 1,200 years after the original. And the famous works of history like Plato and Aristotle and Virgil and Josephus and Tassian, etc., etc., all these famous Greek and Roman writers, most of what they wrote, the earliest copy we have, guys, is around a thousand years old after it happened. Yet historians have no problem calling the secular history accurate and reliable. But the religious history, which has 27,000 copies with, with manuscripts coming just decades or a couple centuries after the original was written, no, 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 we can't question that. There is so much biblical history compared to the other history, it's not even close. If you're going to accept the secular history as accurate and reliable with its thousand plus year difference and its only a couple dozen to a few hundred manuscripts, then you have to accept the biblical history as well. And if you're going to reject the New Testament history and the New Testament manuscripts, then you have to reject the secular writings of, of Plato and the rest. It's an all or nothing proposition, you guys. 
The manuscript history for the New Testament is so vast and numerous compared to any other ancient work of antiquity. It, it truly is astounding how much history and resources we have available to us, both in the original Greek and just translations in general. So we're going to pause right here for now. Um, in our next and final video, we are going to address some of the critics of the New Testament scholars and manuscripts and, and things like that. So until then, see you next time. God bless.